This is the first time we see Gabriel in season two. It, I would jokingly say it was the cheapest costume on the show. The only kind of help we had to give John Hamm was what was behind that box because you see him fully naked from behind but not fully naked from the front, which is probably best. <laughs> and we progress from the first time we see him naked into when he appears in the bookshop. The kind of theory behind this costume was what would what would Gabriel have? What would he have access to? What would Aziraphale have maybe kicking around the bookshop? So I said to Neil and to Douglas, I'd like him to have a kind of bit of an eclectic higgledy-piggledy look. I don't want it to look structured because the Gabriel we know from season one is so silhouetted and outlined and so sharp and so smart that this felt like a softer deconstructed version of him and then they wanted something a little over the top <laughs> like being a big liber archie fan <laughs> i was like that bring that on so for the ball scenes towards the end of the show they wanted gabriel to have something a little bit as i said over the top we started off just with the 70s inspired dinner suit with all the crystals on it and then they wrote a scene where he had to go outside so I was like that oh can we give him a coat so, so we made the feather coat the feathers came in in strips of white and then the dyers ombre the dyes for us it was quite a process and the workshop was every time they cut the feathers you were kind of going through the workshop of feathers everywhere. And then obviously we've got the two main boys from season one, their looks didn't really change. Each look here, I feel it really embodies the characters. We kept the same silhouette, but we gave them a few new layers underneath. And then you'll see either side of those boys, we have heightened 1870s versions of what they are when we see them in real time. We have a mini episode within one of the episodes that's set in the 1870s in Edinburgh. But we sprayed this, we glitter sprayed this, so at night when we shot on it, they, we got a lot of kick off the fabric, a kind of angelic kick. Where Michael Sheen stood there nightly and was sprayed with glitter every night. And then down here, we have Miranda Richardson. Neil wrote on the page that she was a 50s inspired demon. From the minute I read it, I always saw her in red. That's why we stuck with this. She went through a lot of variations in the illustration process because she, I was so giddy to work for her and work with her and design this that I just, I started drawing and then we ended up like, oh my God, we've got too many options. We need to hone it down. This is her, her earth look and this is her when she's in hell. Um, this started out all the same colour and when I fitted it, it, I don't know, it just felt a bit flat so we ended up spraying into the bottom of the skirt so it starts darker and comes up to the hot red at the top because I wanted her to look like she was emerging from hell. She dresses like a magpie but puts herself together in such an interesting way that she was great fun to do because she was so on board for everything and threw herself at everything. And when she would leave the fitting room, she was always trying to put, and I'd be like slapping her hands saying, you can't have that. And then lastly, we've got Muriel, who's our new little junior angel. She has two costumes in the show. We see her first on her earth costume. She comes as a policeman. And then the second time we see her, we see her in heaven, which if you've seen episode one, you see both looks.